All right. Well, when your co-host is off vacationing in Chicago and you have a Texas Tech regional to discuss, uh, you look to somebody who might have some experience pitching in a regional, winning a regional, going to the College World Series. And so I turn to Lubbock native uh, Cooper High Legend. Would you say you're a Cooper High Legend, uh, Ryan? I'll take I'll take it. I'll take it at least. <laughs> uh, but yes, that is Ryan Mosley joining me tonight. We're going to discuss uh, what happened to Texas Tech in the Gainesville Regional Take a look back on his career, maybe talk about Tadlock and some of the stuff that you might be seeing out there on Twitter and all that stuff. Uh, so, Ryan, thanks for joining me tonight, man. How you doing? Great, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Always excited to talk about some tech baseball and, uh, you know, love what you guys do with the pod and getting the word out there. So, really excited to get on. Yeah, we're excited to have you. Excited to hear some of your expertise. Dive into the mind of a pitcher, of somebody who's been in these situations. It's always intriguing to me to kind of think you know, what's going on in your mind. And so uh, let's just go ahead, start off with the regional. Texas Tech, unfortunately, uh, fails to make it out of the Gainesville regional. We ended up as the runner up. Um, but let's start with the good stuff, Ryan. Let's start with the good and the positive from this regional, which was you started it off with two wins. Uh, you took out the two seed UConn in the regional opener, beating them three to two. And then you followed that up on Friday night with uh, or that was Saturday night with a fantastic mm -hmm. win over Unreal. the number two seed, the Gainesville host, the Florida Gators, with a five to four victory thanks to two Gavin Cash home runs, including his one in the eighth inning that ended up being uh, the game winner for you. So, what were your thoughts on the Red Raiders as that regional started, coming away with a gritty three to two win that saw Mason Molina really dominating and, and then being able to pull off that win against the Gators? Yeah, I knew it was going to be a tough regional. Anytime you got right. me, Gainesville, what, Florida was the number two overall seed. And number they're an two, absolute yeah. powerhouse. You know, like, they're going to have how many guys drafted early on, you know, tons. Yeah, I think they like, had a stretch of from their second to their fifth batter who were all guys who were going to be yeah. drafted in the first round. <laughs> right, right. It's, it's insane. You know, they just breed talent down there, and they always do it. And it's awesome to be – you know, as one of those teams kind of like them that are always right. in the mix now, you know, that just wasn't there before. But yeah, back to the game, Mason Molina, unbelievable. You know, that's that's just what you need for coming out there against a good UConn team also. Yeah. You know, that's a, that's no slouch at all. You know, yeah, they, they were hit. top 25 offense. Yeah, they can hit. And he just went in there and just, you know, shoved the whole time. And that's yeah, really what yeah. like sets the tone for a regional like that. You got to have that. And so him doing that, that put me in a good spot. I was like, okay, there we go. Because, you know, with this team, we're a little down on pitching. So anytime right. you have your best guy go out there and do that, you have to have that. Like, if he goes out there and gives up five or something, you know, the outlook on the whole yeah. regional just doesn't do it. So you get your guy to go out there and do that, then you're set, really. And then they come out there on Saturday with one of the most exciting games that yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen in a long time. Like, I was at my in-laws house watching it and me and uh, my father-in-law were pumped the whole time. We were just high five and everybody was excited, dude. That game was nuts. Like Gavin Cash's home runs. Yeah. And then a great performance by uh, Robinson as well. Yeah. Kyle so, Robinson. Like, that's, you know, really, you know, gritty performance by him, you know, giving us what he gave us five innings, I think five solid they innings, went like five, six and, five, and six, gave yeah. up only one run and was yeah. just really, really good competitive on the mound. Yeah. Right. I was, a, I had my wedding shower that night. And so we were all at a nice. friend, you know, friends who are hosting yeah. the wedding shower for us, but we're all red Raiders. So we had the TV on, we were all locked good. in. Everybody's pumped. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. It was, it was a great night. Um, really, really fun game. Uh, saw, you know, Kyle Robinson, I'd been, pumping him up ever since that Oklahoma State outing. I was like, all right, this yeah. has to be your number two guy. And if he's able to give you a solid performance, maybe have a shot. And that's what he was able to do. You got that five to four win. You're feeling really good about yourself. All you got to do is get one more win. But like yeah. you said, it's the Florida Gators in mm -hmm. Gainesville. And they just have dude after dude after dude, yes. including like two dudes on the mound who just completely dominated you. What did you think about right. the Florida pitching in those games? Because – like, we have a top 10 offense, but we weren't able to get anything going against those guys. Yeah, I mean, those guys are great. Obviously, they're great pitchers, and that's the big issue with this team right now is, like, yeah. you know, we don't have the pitching to kind of compete, the depth, at least. We have great right. guys, you know, and, and everything. And then another thing with Tech recently, it's just been hard to hit outside of Lubbock, you know, as you see. And that's kind of been our issue mainly. And so once you see that, once you get against good elite arms like that, 
you just don't you don't feel good about it and then you don't yeah. really have you know you got guys on the mound pressing probably a little more and then you guys got a guys at the plate that are pressing a little bit because they think they gotta you know tie the game up with one swing every ab but it's yeah just... so there's you know obviously that was one of the things on twitter one of the things a lot of people were talking about is the lack of offense in four games you only had nine runs come across you only had one run in those two games against mm-hmm. florida uh, you lost seven to one and six to nothing um What's going through the the dugout during those kind of games where you just can't get anything going? You, I think there was one inning where we had a leadoff double from Austin Green. And it was like, okay, here we go. And then it was mm-hmm. pop out, pop out, line out. And then right. momentum's killed like that. What's going on in the locker room or in the dugout? What are guys talking about? Um, what's, what's going on in that situation? Yeah, you're really just trying to stay up as much as possible. You know, every guy's trying to, like, get to the next guy is really just, like, hand it over. You know, this guy hits a single. You know, it's just got to be, you know, step by step. It's not like I think people get into it a little too much whenever they're like, okay, (laughs) yeah. Well, but you also got to like think, okay, this guy hits a single. Well, all you got to do next, this next guy can just walk right here. You just don't need to be striking. It's all about you know good quality abs in this in these situations because every base runner matters. And you know those guys are really just trying to like you know keep everybody up and not get down because like. Yeah, how many times has this team scored, you know, 10 runs in an inning? You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. It's like you're never out of the game. You just got to – you actually have to, like, believe it. Yeah, and that's why you had to watch all the way through because, you know, I was at the Tech TCU game this year where we were down 8 to nothing. You come back and – I mean, it was 20 to 16, which is a football yeah. score. But you right, um, right. know what this offense is capable. What did you think about their approach? It felt like there was a lot of – uh, first swing outs, like somebody's coming up, they pop out, they line out, they mm-hmm. dribble out or – foul ball out what do you think about that approach do you think that was something that was determined that we got to jump on these guys because they're because they were painting the strike zone it's not like these dudes were all over the place yeah no they're painting and umpires were a little suspect they got better as the weekend went on but yeah you know those game those first few games were you know brutal that That, that that saturday game shouldn't even have been as close as it was you know that call on bazell still like oh my gosh it was so bad brutal brutal i don't know how you make any kind of call like that, especially in that right. situation. But besides the point, yeah, guys, yeah. I think you get into playoffs, and especially with a lot of these guys, it's a lot of younger guys. I think they're, you know, they're really just trying to be aggressive and they want to get a hit, they want to get on base. But yeah, you got to be able to work counts and you know let it. The pitcher's got to come to you at the end of the day. Right. He's got to throw it over the plate. You know, you got to. You're the one standing there. And I think just guys get aggressive. They want to get hits and they want to hit homers. They want to hit doubles. You know what I mean? It's just. It's about playing smart baseball in regionals right. and stuff like that. Um, there are some times that I thought that we might have – we should have maybe tried to bunt or we try to do something just to to mix it up. I think, you know, when Austin Green got the second, I was kind of thinking, you got to go maybe bunt and get him over to third. It's just been so hard to get a run across. Like when you have an opportunity like this, you got to make the most of it. What do you think? Do you think just Tadlock was just trusting his guys or, or – um, just just thinking that one of these one of these at bats somebody's going to come through yeah he definitely is he doesn't like to take the bat out of guys hands you know yeah. as as much as like you think you're sitting there you're like okay we just get this guy here step by step but in in tad's mind he's like okay this guy's gonna rope a single up the middle and probably score yeah. him right here you know or he's like this guy's gonna hit a double right here you know and it, then we're just gonna switch spots so yeah he doesn't like to take the guy the bat out of guys hands like i think he we, he started doing that a little more and like when was that 2015 he's tried to do a little more small ball for us and yeah. it just really didn't work and then the next year he was like all right just have at it and it you know 2016 was a lot better yeah. than that you know yeah and also the game of baseball since since like you were pitching for tech it's, mm-hmm. it's really changed so much i felt like no when we were like in your years in 14 15 16 it was a lot of small ball and then now like you don't really see a whole lot of small ball anywhere anymore in baseball yeah yeah i think I think a big reason I know for they may not say the balls are different or the bats are different a little bit, but they definitely are. There's a little yeah. bit, you know, it's a little more offense related for sure. But yeah, you know, and so and you get guys that are more, you know, attuned to doing that. They're not up there to bunt. And to be honest with you, is like I doubt they do a ton of bunting practice too. So you get yeah. guys out there and like you get them to square for yeah. a bunny, you can't get too 
two down or whatever. So you get yeah, a two you can strike. Tell. Yeah, exactly. So like you could tell. I, I, think, I think it was Dylan Maxey at one point had a bunt, and everybody was just like, "Whoa, yeah. that was a that was, did not look like this guy's ever squared up a bunt." <laughs> right. That's what I'm saying. And it actually is a little harder than people think too. So you're like, "Yo, why right. not bunt him over right here?" You know. But like, yeah, like I said, if you miss and then you're down two strikes there already without even taking a hack at a pitch, like puts you in a bad situation. Flashback into Brooks's baseball childhood. My dad became obsessed with me bunting, and he was my coach, and we would just practice bunting all the time. And every time I'd go up to the plate, I'd look for the signal, and bunt was like, you know, grab the ear, and yeah. I would get bunt every single time. Freaking hated it. I freaking hated bunting. But, like, I had one game where I went three for three bunting, so I was pretty there proud of that. Got a hey, game ball, you, you know. Hey, um, nice, nice. But yeah, bunting, I'm, I mean, it's not easy. And then I think one of the things is, like, man, you're watching – I was watching – the squeeze play, um, I think Saturday before the Gator game, and everybody's just hitting bombs, man. Everybody, yeah, every team, it was just highlight after highlight was bombs. And I think like a lot of these guys, their approach, you know, Gavin Cash is of the world. They're just like, hey, yeah. if I hit one, it's gone. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'm just going to try to get that one pitch. And if I get that pitch, then, hey, two run, three runs, you know, whatever. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. Yeah, that's just the way the game is nowadays. They All these kids have so much data out there and everything. So their approach is like, okay, well – I can try to hit this many bombs because I mean, what Cash had what Two. 26, yeah. 26 yeah, homers yeah, 26 or whatever, and then yeah. and then it's the same. It's the opposite of it on, on the mountain. Like guys are just trying to punch guys out. They're not trying to get quick outs yeah. or anything. They're just trying to punch guys out, and that's just kind of the way the game has changed a little bit since I since I was playing even right. what six years ago or so. So. Yeah, you yeah. De definitely didn't see dudes with uh, 31 home runs <laughs> like like Dude, Florida had insane. a 31. And 20 yeah, it's it's crazy. Yeah, um, we would have like guys like probably like some mid-major guys. There were always more bombs there, but like they would right. be around like the 20s or so. But like us, our team, I feel like we only had like I feel like the most most every year was like, you know, 15 maybe. That's yeah, it was it. like a lot of dudes who could a home run could hit a home run, but not right. like one specific dude who was just bomb and everything you're right, um, right. Your, your thoughts on the young guys pitching i know we lost those two games but i thought the dudes who came out and pitched Dude. and right now their names are escaping me so i gotta go back uh, yeah we names. got what um petty, Trevor, petty i thought he did great petty yeah, was great petty. uh you know he battled because what he's a freshman right no right yeah he's a freshman yeah. and then um and then you had Jacob Rogers in the second yeah, game, who's Rogers also a freshman. Started off great too. Yeah, started off great. So that's that's good to see, especially when you get like young guys like that, some experience in you know postseason. That's what it's all about. You really have to have young freshmen step up. That's yeah to be to be good in like regionals and super regionals and stuff like that. Like you saw it, I guess 2014, my freshman year. Yeah, you were a freshman. Me and uh, Dylan Dushak, who. I mean, you know, yep. Dylan was great all year. And then I started at the end of the year, you know, I was good out of the pen. And then, you know, we did great starting, you know, yeah. kind of like that. And then 2016, we had guys like Gingery and, you yeah. know, Davis Martin. Davis Martin, yeah. Yeah, you, that's what you have to have. You got to have freshmen that step up and, you know, kind of take that role. And then you have all the older guys, you know, maybe out of the pen or whatever, another starter to like kind of complement it. And if you get that mix, that's when you know you're a little, you're dangerous. Right. I thought they were really good. And then one of the points uh, like where Twitter discussion gets going, you see some people every time a coach goes to the bullpen, whether, you know, if, if it backfires, coach is going to get criticism. Right. It happens all the time, professional college, yeah. all the way down. Um, and it just so happens in both these games, right? When you went to the pin, that's kind of when things fell apart for you. What are your kind of thoughts on that? And what would you say to like those people who always get upset about any time you go to the bullpen because there's a flip side of it you leave the dude in there and then he gets uh hit up that inning then yeah. you know you're gonna get mad at the coach for leaving him in too long right right yeah yeah it's always hindsight 2020 with fans and everything like that you know they're just like you go to the pin too early they're mad you go to the pin too late they're mad it's just kind of how yeah, it works and you know like the coaching staff they have faith if they put a guy out there they think that he can yeah. get three outs you know that's just kind of how it works you know you know, they would like to throw one guy maybe all the time. You know, they yeah, like to throw Beckel <laughs> every day if they could, I'm sure. But, um, you know, you can't do you gotta that. got to save dude's arms. <laughs> right, exactly. It's just not the way it works. They're not conditioned that way. And so I think the decisions are, 
I think you can, as a coach, you can only get criticized more on, you know, yeah. you only, you only think about the bad decisions that they make. You never be like, Oh, remember when he brought that guy in with two outs that one time and he got the yeah, out and you're like, no, nah, you don't yeah. think of that. You know what I mean? You're like, Oh, why did he pull that guy? This is, yeah. you know? So I think, I think that's just part of coaching and, you know, Gardner knows that and he's a great pitching coach and Tad knows that too. They have, you know, they talk every day. They see these guys every day way more than, you know, that these fans see, you know, like and yeah. these guys are passionate about it. Like, that's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's like letting them do their jobs. And then, right. you know, the other thing about it is these were freshmen. These were like their longest appearances all season. And right. at some point you're going through the lineup a second, third time. Uh, dudes, they were starting to get hit a little bit. Now they didn't give up a run, but you know, right. at some point they're going to break loose on the guy. And then, um, you come back from there. I kind of wanted to get, this is maybe one of the spots where I want to pick your brain a little bit on like what's yeah. going through your mind. Um, Lopez came in there and we had that crazy inning, that crazy mm -hmm. inning where they had the guys on second and third. And we had that crazy double play where they hit the, the, yeah. you know, grounder over to Bazell. He throws the guy out at home. They have the base running blunder. Right. We get another guy out at home and you're looking like, oh my gosh, we just got out of this inning where it looked like they were going to go up. Right. And then Lopez kind of just lost control. He got hit and then mm -hmm. he's starting to walk guys. What's kind of, I kind of want to get the pitcher's mentality. Like what's going through your mind in that situation? Cause I just feel bad for the kid. Cause he just can't yeah. locate anything. Um, it seems like he's got good stuff, but some of those pitches are missing right there. Ump's not right. giving him a couple calls, and then it just kind of all falls apart. Yeah, I think you get to that point where that crazy double play happened, and then at that point, it's got to be like, okay, get this guy out. Like, yeah, yeah, it should be, but it didn't seem like that, right? It seemed like it got no. even more sped up on him a little bit, you know? Yeah, it, it felt like. Yeah, it felt like we had no outs and a guy on second. Right, right, you know? exactly. Yeah, and I, I thought the same thing because I was like, oh, thank God that just happened. Like, that's yeah, huge. Like, oh it should God. be a yeah. huge weight off of your shoulders whenever you're pitching. Like, if that happens to me while I'm out there, which, by the way, yeah. never happened. I was not that lucky. <laughs> I've, never, I, I've only seen that play yeah. happen a handful of times. Definitely not in college. Like, that was yeah. just insane no, was, execution, you know, by all wild. the guys. But yeah, I think the game just kind of sped up on him a little bit. And that's the thing as a pitcher in high leverage situations like that, you really have to like take a breath and be like, okay, I'm worried about this pitch right here. That's, I think that's the best way to go about it, you know, and because that's all it takes like is one little thing and you start, you know, heartbeat starts racing, you know, you start going a little too fast. You try to be perfect on pitches, everything falls off and then you see kind of what happens. So. Yeah, I always just feel bad because, you know, especially yeah. in a crowd like that where they're going yeah. all whatever. Yeah. And then it, it just – and then there's always that pitch, I swear, every single time. There's always that borderline strike, and then the ump calls it a ball, and you're like, oh, that that's it. You yeah. know, that's a wrap now. Right. How frustrating is that when you're, like, trying to find the location, and then you get that pitch that you mm -hmm. think is right there, and then you get another ball, and you're just like, ugh, I, yeah. like, what do I got to do? <laughs> Yeah, those are those are the toughest situations for sure. Because like I said, you're hanging on every pitch, you know, right. you're like, and you know, you throw that strike and you're like, yes, here we go, ball. And you're like, oh my God, what do I have to do? You know, like, you know, I, I can't even feel like, I don't think I can replicate that at all right now. You know what yeah. I mean? You're, you're on the mound and you're, and it's an island out there. You're, yeah. you're so alone on the mound in those situations. And so it's just tough. It's, it, and like I said, it's hard to like step back and just really be like, okay, just here we go. But like, dude, you're, you're hanging on every pitch and you just, there's not a lot you can do. Yeah. Honestly, it's just, it's, I mean, that's what makes the guys that can do it the greats because right. you know, they, a lot of times they don't even get in that situation, but it's the guys that can like navigate out of them that, you know, that make it a lot further. Yeah. Those are always the toughest ones. I'm like, he's just trying, he's, he's mm -hmm. trying to find the zone and then you get that pitch and you, oh, I'm just like, yes. come on, give, give him one, man. Right. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> It's like you can see this kid out here struggling like you got to get the close ones. But yeah, um, right. the other other kind of discussion, I guess, kind of while we're here, um, the Gardner discussion, there, there's a lot of people that I guess aren't a big fans of him right now, to right. say the least. And, man, I don't know anything about pitching coach, pitch coaching or anything like that. So I always feel out of pocket trying to talk about that stuff. Um, but, you know, the pitching has been struggling. It doesn't feel like you're mm -hmm. as deep. So do you think? Like you're, you know, Garner, obviously you pitched with him. So like, what would you say to the people who are frustrated with him and, uh, and, and kind of where's your head at on what's going on with this pitching staff right now? 
Yeah, I mean, I think Gardner is a great mind. He's he's one of you know one of the best coaches I've had. He's just he has to have the right guys though. Yeah. They have their the only guys that work with Gardner are you know Bulldogs that are gonna go out there and like you know they don't let that kind of stuff get to them. You know they're they're just out there throwing. They're like I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna shove. You know what yeah. I mean? And M- college based, types. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like those are his kind of guys and. And the thing about uh, college baseball, it's tough. It's like, you know, your limited practice hours, you're limited right. so much and everything. And pitching is tough, man. It's like yeah. there's a lot of development with these guys. And like I said, or like we were talking about earlier, hitting is up in yeah. every aspect in college baseball, too. So I think you get a little almost spoiled from the years past of the pitching that we've had. And you kind of think, you know, every year has to be that way. But Dude, you gotta have you gotta have the right guys fit for it, you know, and especially in today's like market, I'll say, of transfers and everything, it's even yeah. harder to find guys that are that fit your mold. Yep. So and then you know, there's only so much recruiting that he can do to make sure he's got the right guys. But I'll tell you one thing, the people that are questioning him, you know, he's a smart guy, he knows all about pitching. You know, he's been there, he's done it, and he's seen many greats and he knows more than you know anyone that is yeah. questioning his stuff it's just at the end of the day it's about getting the right guys out there yeah at the end of the day and it's also executing and like mm-hmm. like you said pitching is hard to do man it's it's, yeah, it's pitching tough. and hitting a baseball are two of probably the most hard things to do in sports no because uh just you know what it takes and so yeah like, and, and then you know the other thing about college baseball is you're competing with the majors too in recruiting like yeah. now now with nil with the transfer portal kids going to the draft all you know uh, from high school there's just such a man it's, it just seems like a mess to have to deal with nowadays yeah it's tough i mean it always has been like you said with the because you can get drafted out of high school right. and and it was the same way it's just a little bigger now because you can transfer d1 to d1 seamlessly yeah. as opposed yeah. to whenever i was playing it was just you transfer to juco's which guys had no problem with though also because right, yeah. you get drafted out of juco and you know there's plenty of high quality baseball in juco in texas mm-hmm. especially so it's not too much different i don't think they've had to deal with all that for many years right. we've always had guys that are you know high commits that are getting drafted early rounds in the right, out of high yeah. school you know like stuff like right. that so they've had, those to, are... they've had to navigate through those right. markets you know so yeah, what I'm, I, I guess what I mean by that is like, you know, college football, they're not having to compete with these guys going pro. I guess basketball right. has a little bit of that now where guys are, you know, going to these G leagues or yeah, the overseas, overseas or, or stuff wherever. like that uh-huh. now. But baseball has really been the only one where kids can go straight from high school right. uh, straight to the pros. And so that makes right. recruiting different. And then right. also you're now the transfer portals as crazy as ever where you got dudes going from tech to Texas, Texas to yeah. tech. And it's just like this cool, crazy, crazy world dude. that's been open. It is. Do you, yeah. um, I, one of the questions I'm going to ask you, and since we're already here on the transfer portal, um, do and, and NIL, do you get jealous of the opportunities that players have nowadays? Or do you look back at it and you're kind of like, I'm kind of glad it was a little more simple back when I was playing? <laughs> Uh, I don't think I get jealous. I'm happy that they are allowed to, you know, profit off of their name and everything. Like, I think that's a no brainer. It should have been like that forever ago. Like, yeah, I'm that's here, like the yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's easy. It's no brainer. The dumbest like, conversation and people yes. who get mad about it. I'm just like, are you kidding me? This is a billion dollar business, and the dudes who are out there <laughs> making people yeah. profit of it get nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, and then it's like brings up like the thing where everybody's like, oh, well they'll make their money professionally or whatever. Like, dude, just cause you're a great college player doesn't necessarily mean doesn't that mean, you're going to, yeah. you're going to go to the next level. Like that's just how it works. Like you should be able to profit off of, you know, yeah, we're in agreement 100%. with that, but yeah. no, I, I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm jealous of them. I think it's awesome. You know, I think it would have been cool. I think it would have benefited a lot of the guys that were on our team. You know, I, yeah. I knew a lot of guys that, you know, struggled that didn't have any money. I mean, myself included, I had no money in college. Like, you know, I wasn't like, hurting or whatever i'm a college kid it doesn't really you don't need right, that yeah. much money right yeah, <laughs> yeah we all went through it yeah we're we all, all went we're all thriving you know spending yeah. whatever money we can at chimneys exactly. just to get through the weekend yeah. you know <laughs> exactly exactly yeah and i don't think that's another thing too is like I, you know you're not gonna have like big money guys in baseball anyway it's just not yeah. that it's not really that market but if you can get money while you're doing it absolutely you should be able yeah. to do it 
you know, you know, and uh, all the baseball players, I think starting now are all going to get a $25,000 NIL deal. So that's cool yeah, for all the crazy. Them. Yeah. Well, I was been curious about the transfer portal part of it too, is, is like, like, was it always just text tech for you? Was there ever any chance of going anywhere else if you had the opportunities? Because one of the things I do really like about the transfer portal is more for like these small school, smaller mm-hmm. school guys, guys who didn't get recruited by the Texas Techs, the Floridas or whatever. Yeah. They can go to like Nolan Hester. He can go to Wofford and play mm-hmm. really good baseball and then work his way up to a Texas Tech type school. Right. I think that's a really cool opportunity for the transfer portals. I don't necessarily like so much the, you know, Gavin Cash being a go for Texas to Tech, even though that works out in our favor, but you know, favor, we've right. had vice versa, uh, you know, stuff like that happen. So, right. like, but yeah, in your it mind, could also be the work. It could be. I mean, he yeah. could transfer to Texas next year. Like, yeah, he could <laughs> you know if he I mean? wanted like, to. He could he go might, right back. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So so that stuff like is a little like I don't know. You get into the point where it's it's a little more selfish. Which I mean, at the end of the day, it is about what's best for you as a player. Yeah. You know, but. But yeah, it does take away that team aspect a little bit. Like, like once I got to tech, I knew I was going to be there for three years at least, you know, yeah. like I had to be there and I was all in on the team. That's just kind of how it worked. And I'm glad that that's how it was because I wouldn't like the, the thought of like, okay, well, what's my next step kind of thing. Right. Yeah. You know, but to your question, yeah, I had, so I started pitching like my senior year of high school, really. So I was a little later in getting like recruited and all that. And by that time I was already committed to tech because I had thrown like in a summer game, I think like, or maybe it was preseason or something. And I, you know, threw pretty hard. I was very raw though, not a good pitcher by any means my junior year. So I threw like maybe two innings or something like that, but they saw me on the mound and I was a decent hitter too. And I was a catcher back then. And so they offered me a scholarship and I committed pretty early yeah, actually. And so I started to get more recruiting looks my senior year. And by that time I was already committed to tech and it, I didn't really give it a whole lot of thought because I also, you know, I'm not going to flip my commitment. This is my team that I've been, you know, rooting for ever since I was a kid, man. Like, yeah, you're you're a Red Raider from birth basically. And then the opportunity to play at home, Yeah, your parents there, your your siblings and all that stuff is a pretty cool opportunity. Yeah, I will say it was tough, though, once I started to get calls from, like, the big baseball schools. Like, I was getting calls from, like, Arkansas and Mississippi State and, you know, some other big schools around. Like, I remember, like, some random ones like Oregon and stuff like that. Yeah. And, you know, you get to that point and you start thinking, you're like, oh, wow. Like, okay, cool. I'm gonna go to, yeah, yeah, I'm going to go to Tech who my – during my senior year, I guess, the year before I was there. So, in 2013, I think they were, like, maybe dead last in the big 12 or something. Yeah, we weren't good. <laughs> yeah. And then people are asking me like, dude, why are you going to go to tech? And and yeah. I would just tell them, honestly, I'd be like, dude, if I'm going to be good, I want to help tech be good. That's just the way yeah. I was. I, I love tech. And then Steven Smith was one of my good friends too. And he yeah. always was going to go to tech too. And so we were always just like, all right, let's, let's go. Let's see what happens. You know, let's, you know, give it our all. And then, it, yeah. I mean, the rest is history, but you know, it could have easily yeah, been worked out quite that, well. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It right. Yeah. It so, so no regrets there at all. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, and then were, you were dra- drafted, right. As a senior going yeah. into yeah, your freshman school. year. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was a crazy experience too. Cause like I said, you know, senior year start pitching and then like all these scouts start coming up to me yeah. too. And I'm just like, God, what is like, it just all happens so fast. And then I pretty much told them, so how it works is like, they'll have like little meetings with you and you'll like kind of give them a number that you would like take if you were going to, and I gave them a super high number. Cause I was like, I'm going to go to tech. Like, I feel like I want to yeah. go to college in my mind. I was like, okay, I'm going to go there for three years and I'm going to just get better. Right. And so I'll just get drafted, you know, at a better spot or whatever. And then, so they drafted me, I think it was in like the 35th or sixth round, something 36, I think. And so I was just expecting it to be kind of like a, they would have like courtesy picks or whatever back then just to like say, Hey, like, Oh, we do like you, you know, you're not going to sign for whatever. But then actually I was at summer school and I was at a party and this was in like in August or whatever. It was like a week before I think that like the deadline is that they can like offer you money and like sign yeah. their guys or whatever. And so I get a call from the scout or whatever. And I was like, Oh, I need it you know, take this. Yeah. So I step outside or whatever. I thought he was just going to say like, Hey, how are you? You know, like, yeah, whatever. And then they like offered me like, Hey, we're going to give you 
can offer you this. I know it's not like your number that you wanted or whatever. And then they offered me the money and I was just like, oh, well, this is not what I was expecting at all. But then I just thought about it for like literally a day. And I was like, nah, I'm still, I'm going to school. Like, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm always curious about the decisions on that, especially nowadays, you know, uh, you know, especially since more has been uncovered about like what it's like going through double a single a and some of those right. the minor leagues and and kind of the the money that those programs have which aren't a lot you know which is why mm -hmm. they're getting rid of some of them and stuff like that and so right. what's the better path is it to go through college and actually have a better experience and mm -hmm. um and have those years or is it better just go straight to <laughs> straight right. to the minors uh, yeah and, uh, and it, nowadays it's got to be a little harder because they've made it yeah. so much better for minor leaguers and oh, stuff i think they yeah. pay for their housing and you know they yeah. up their salaries and stuff so yeah i bet it's even tougher for for these kids now having to make that decision because because that's the thing too is the benefits of going straight out of high school are like okay you're competing for a spot your freshman year you know you may get 10 innings you may get 60 innings like you yeah. know where as if you're drafted out of high school you're getting a set amount of innings they're throwing you out there if you give up 10 runs every game it doesn't matter right you know what i mean so that's those are the pros and cons there but i think if you're a guy that just likes to compete and wants to like win at a like a more meaningful level than you really care about i guess your professional career that's where college comes into play i think right okay well, we diverted a little bit from the Texas Tech baseball there, but that was a topic of conversation that we were going to get to at some point. And so we hit a good point there to get that discussed. So let's go back and, and kind of dissect the whole Texas Tech season. The Red Raiders finish off this 2023 season, 41 and 23 overall runners up in the regional for the second straight year that you finished runners up in the regional. So kind of your just thoughts on this season as a whole and kind of where Texas Tech stands, because you know, a lot of people view this as a failure because once you make Omaha once, Texas yeah. Tech fans just one assume every you're going to make it every year. Kind of right. happened with the Final Four. Once you do one good thing, you just have to do it every year. And it's pretty right. hard. The tournament's a crapshoot. Right. Um, but what are your thoughts on where the program sits kind of right now after what, what people might call down years? <laughs> yeah, I, I think the program's at a great spot. I think it yeah. – Definitely just comes down to recruiting, though. As long as you get these guys, that's what it's all about. But I think you get that pedigree of going to Omaha and, like, you're a household name Changes in things. Texas. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I think that that's what I think you're in a good spot. And you know the coaching staff. Like, you're not getting a whole lot of turnover or anything. Tadlock's going to be here for yeah. as long as Tech wants it. You know, like, he's, he's there as long as he wants to be there pretty much, which is awesome, I think, as a – as a recruit, knowing that oh, yeah. you got that your coach isn't going to leave all of a sudden while you're there, like you don't have to worry about that. So I think the state of Texas Tech baseball is in a great spot, and we're getting what new facility, new clubhouse, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, so things like that, I think, are in a great spot. And then to your point about the whole season, you know, it's 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 a little bit down here in the sense that you what you don't host a regional, but you're still yeah. you're still making the tournament, like you're not. The Big 12 is competitive, man. It's it's a hard yeah. league to play in. Like, that's just the way it is. Like, I think you got to take what you can get. Like you said, you can't, you're not going to win it every year. It's just, no. as long as, yeah. I think as long as you're getting to the postseason and you have a chance, that's really all that matters. Because because once you get into the yeah. regionals and stuff, like that's whenever, you know, you make magic happen or whatever. But that's, that's really all you can ask for. Yeah, because, I mean, there's two sides, like, right, we got in as a three seed and we had right. what would I would consider a much more enjoyable postseason than Oklahoma State who was a host yeah, who got and got ousted their, in yeah, exactly. two games at their stadium. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm with you. Like anytime you make the postseason, it, it it's a tough, it's long, it's a grueling mm -hmm. season. Anytime you can make it to the postseason, you're giving yourself a chance. Um, mm -hmm. And so as long as you're making the postseason, I'm, I'm excited about where this program is Yeah, yeah. Um, because you can always go back to where we weren't making it. <laughs> and I don't right, want to exactly. do that. Like, yeah, it's like people forget so soon that like what 2000, I don't know, 10 or however when it was early 2000s to 2013. Yeah. We were bad, man. No one wanted to see that stuff. Like, so what, what you it's a give and take. Yeah. You want to lose the regional or you want to not make it at all? It's, so, it, yeah, just I, I would rather have the chance to do right. it and then know that if we make it to the tournament, there's a good chance we can make it to the College World Series because we've done it. We've seen Tadlock do mm -hmm. it 
And so that's where I'm at. And then also, if you just kind of pay attention to our roster, it's young, man. It's super young. You're throwing two freshmen in your two most important games right. of the season. That's like where your roster stands. Right. Um, and if you're able to retain a lot of these guys, you know, now nowadays it's, you know, you never know who's coming back. And, you know, you've True. obviously seen some names hit the portal already. But if you're able to retain Molina, Robinson, those young guys that you've got on your pitching staff, of course, mm-hmm. people you're going to bring in through the transfer portal, JUCO and all that stuff. Right. Like, I think next year, like we have a really good outlook on the season. Yeah, no, I agree a hundred percent with you there. Like, that's just, like you said, that's the way it is. It's going to be, you know, some, you're going to have those years where you just, you know, strike magic when you're in there and you're going, but other years you have it like this. And, and yeah. honestly, I think that people should take it as a, almost a win that we got. I, I, I guess I can see where they're upset because we got up 2-0 or whatever. But if you paid attention to Tech Baseball all year, you know that we yeah. did not have the depth to yeah to finish that out, man. Like, it's just like we did not have the pitching depth. And once you go 2-0, that's really all you can know for. You really hope that your bats come alive, and, and that's just the way cookie crumbles, huh? Yeah, and your bats just weren't working for you, and you got, mm-hmm. you know, I, I thought we got as good of pitching as I could have expected, you know. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, uh, on the road in the hostile environment playing Florida three times, I thought your guys kind of held up pretty well, and then you just no doubt. keep holding them, holding them, and then the bats don't work, and then it just gets harder yeah. and harder and harder. Yeah, exactly. Um, so anything you want to say to people who are frustrated with Tadlock and that – because like I think we're along the same thought process here is like yeah. uh, this program without Tadlock yeah. would be uh completely different. And so uh yeah. I, I guess people get spoiled. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. And and it's a good thing that they're spoiled, right? Because that means mm-hmm. we've had all this success, right? Yeah. So I don't blame them rather, for being yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I don't blame them for being upset, but like at the end of the day, yes, look what he has done since he's been here and it's more than than any of us could have thought was going to happen, you know, and the way it's set up for the future is great. So anyone doubting him or doubting the future of the program, right. just take a look back from where he started and where it has come from. And that's all you really need to know. Like tech fans are passionate. That's the way it is. Like we yeah. love our sports. Like that's just how it is. And I understand like, yeah, be frustrated, be mad for a week or whatever, be mad. Like, but Tadlock's not going anywhere. Support the guy, support these Red Raiders, like, we're going to be fine. We'll be fine. Yeah, and as long as Tadlock's here, you have a shot every single year, yeah, um, which was something that you really didn't have before. Um, yeah. Kind of going back, and, and now that we're here on oh. Tadlock, he, I guess, was the original recruit for you, right? Or, yeah, yeah, he was the recruiting coordinator and everything. So, yeah, he recruited me. And then, actually, back to committing and everything, he kind of even, like, tricked me. So to commit because I had no, like he was just having a conversation with me and talking on the phone. And I was like, yeah, I like love, thanks for the offer. Like I love tech, like always been a dream. And he was like, Oh, so you're coming. And I'm like on the phone, I'm an 18 year old kid. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what am I gonna do? Say no to him? Like whatever. <laughs> and so, yeah, that's how I ended up committing. But yeah, so he was Put there the and then, yeah, but exactly, exactly. And then what, I guess he was announced, uh, the year after that. Right. I guess yeah, in 2014 was his, yeah. or was 13 his first year? 13 yes, his that's first right. year. That's right. and 13 14. was the first year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So pretty but, yeah. immediate success there. So, so like looking back on it, what do you think like made Tadlock? Cause you know, you, you think about the years before nothing, nothing, nothing. And mm-hmm. then like, I remember from a fan's perspective and like this is a conversation we'll get into probably a little bit more about our our, our shot bet draft team. but you know i didn't really pay attention to the baseball team because we had really no reason you? to pay pay you? attention yeah. to it and Why then all of a sudden you start the 14 season it's like oh we beat number three indiana and yeah. like oh and, and like so you kind of started to pay attention to it a little more but like when he took over the helm and once you signed on your freshman year did you see any of what your career ends up being like happening at tech or was it kind of pretty surprising once all said and done to college world series appearances? <laughs> no. And like, maybe it is, maybe I'm like mistaken it now because you know, we did go to the world series twice while I was there, but I don't think that anyone had any other expectations than that at the beginning of that year. So we got a lot yeah. of he, that's, I think what was good about Tadlock was, so he was a Juco guy beforehand. And he had all these JUCO connections, so he knew the guys to, like, bring in. You bring right. in, like, you know, Corey Taylor, who was unreal, and you bring in, like, Don Moreno, 
you know, different guys like that, yeah. that you, that really just like, you know, set the tone for these guys. And for us as freshmen, like me and Dylan yeah. and, you know, and then who else was in there from, uh, Steven. Yeah. Steven. And then you have like, you know, Sadbury, who was a Juco guy who was right. unreal for us, uh, you know, um, Johnny Droz, who was there beforehand, came Smith. They were all Juco guys. You know, they're all Juco guys. So they have this like, I don't know, it's more of like an FU attitude about right. them back then. Those Juco guys were just like something else. And they brought that to us. And, you know, we kind of took that. We're like, okay, why can't we win? Like these guys have won at other places. Like, you know, who cares if everybody's writing us off? You know, we're going to go out here and we're going to, you know, do right. our best. And it turned out that we were you know, these salty guys that, you know, we were yeah. always like dogs, that dog yeah, mentality. We were. That's just, that's just how it worked, man. And we just, so we really never like count ourselves out and we were very, we were good bond and everything, you know, a lot of good friends on that team. And so, and then it obviously helps when you start winning games and everything, but yeah. you know, I think that's Tadlock's biggest attribute was recruiting at the beginning, you know, kind of like the same stuff you're seeing with uh, Joey McGuire right now. It's like, it's all right, about yeah. getting the right guys. Dude. Once you get that right guys and that culture change, you're like, okay, Texas Tech isn't an yeah. eighth place Big 12 team. Like, you know, we are, we should be in the mix every year. And so right, I think yeah. that's the biggest thing. From like a X's and O's standpoint, and this is the probably the only part of baseball that I will just never connect with is the coaching <laughs> part of it, like during the game, like, and, and what it, it's probably my favorite thing about Tadlock too, is that anytime they pan to him, he just, he's, he's just cool. And it could be an inning where your pitcher is, you know, giving up home run after home run, yeah. or it could be an inning where you're scoring 10 runs. Right. He's there putting his chapstick on just cool and collected. <laughs> um, is like, is he just like always like that in the dugout? And then for making his decisions and stuff like that, what, what kind of separates him from, from some of his other coaches? I'd say the biggest separator for him is he just, he lets guys play. Like that's, yeah. that's his big, he doesn't get in the way he's, he's good at, you know, letting these guys go out there and play. Like he knows who he recruited. He knows who he brought in, you know, what more do you have to tell him? And I think that's the biggest thing, biggest attribute to managers, coaches, whatever, baseball wise is like letting your guys play. Cause I think at the end of the day, in my, in my opinion, you know, coaches in baseball really just, getting away more than they can help yeah. you know and it, it is i mean they set the lineup and they do all those things and it's it's more like before the game during the game it's a little tougher like you don't need to be making you know defensive switches all the time and i think he does a good job of that of just letting people out there and play their game yeah i think you know you especially watching the big 12 tournament and then our regionals it's like anytime another team's opposing pitcher like walks a guy Catchers yeah. out there, coaches, Guys, uh, yeah. pitching mm -hmm. coaches out there. And it feels like, you know, maybe, you know, I've seen, definitely seen some people on Twitter think that we should do more of that. But there's also that just like that, you know, I think that's empowering for a pitcher, for players is that your coaches mm -hmm. trust you. Hey, he's he's walked a couple guys, but I know what I saw when I recruited this guy. I know what this kid can do. I'm going to trust mm -hmm. that he's going to do it. Now, sometimes that might bite you in the ass, but, you know, I, I think there is a, a power to that. Yeah, no, I completely agree with you there. And that's just, and then people also think that there's like a magic, magic words that you can go out there and say yeah. you're on the mound. You're like, Dude, that's just not how it works. So like a mound visit isn't like something crazy or whatever. Like, it's just not how it works. And like also early on in the years and like throughout the year, you have to let guys work through stuff. If you don't, yeah. then you won't, then you won't get guys in the, in the regional that like, I'm sure some of those guys that came in, probably weren't yeah. ready because they didn't get the right reps during the year because, you know, like it's just the nature of it. You know, you have to win ball games at the end of the day. So that's where I think like early on in the season is the most important because you have to get those, you know, reps. So you're ready for those situations. Yeah. And so you don't have to, you know, so when your number is called, you're not like me, you want, you want yeah. me to go out there, you know yeah. what I mean? And it's just, so I think they do a good job of putting, a faith, putting their faith in guys and really letting them, work through stuff. Okay. So picture yourself, you're on the mound, you're losing a little control. You might've walked a couple of guys. Gardner comes out Me, there. Never. <laughs> what's what, <laughs> what's like, they, what were you wanting from them to say to you that like might will get you locked back in? Like, like oh, I, I know so, every guy's got to have something right. That like the coach knows. Yeah. So what was your kind of like kick me in the ass or, or what? 
So, I mean, so I just always, I, I hated whenever anyone came out there. Cause I was like, I yeah. got this, like get like, stop like, like whatever. I don't need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was, and honestly, they knew that though. They know their guys, like the, anytime that they would come out there and talk to me, they would be like, Hey, you got this. Like, I'm just giving you a break. Yeah. That's it. That's like literally all they would say to me. And I think it's just tailored to each guy. You know, right. there's some guys that probably need to be told like, Hey, you're being, you know, like, come on, what are you doing? Like, let's yeah. go. You know, and it well, just depends on the player. And it's just, I think they know their players and that's just kind of how it yeah. works. And that makes me think of John Lackey. Uh, Cause he, he was kind of that dude who like, I remember he pitched, I'm a Red Sox fan. He pitched for us a couple yeah. of years and he, he, somebody come talk to him. You're like, fuck you. Yes, <laughs> yes, so dude. Every time, dude, he, he, that's, that's just how it is. Like some, you know, like, yeah, get the fuck back in the dugout. Like, I don't want yeah. you, I don't want you out here. This is my man. I'm like doing this, you know? And, and they did a good job of that and they know who, who wants what and everything. Yeah. So is there anybody who needs like a, cause sometimes I'm like, man, I just want to go up there and be like, throw a fucking strike, man. Is there anybody that <laughs> would like, would take that? Like, like they want you to uh, come out and just tell me to throw a fucking strike. <laughs> so I'm trying to think of like a good, there was all right, Corey Rayleigh. So he's not a pitcher in this sense, but he was very motivated off of like some shit talking and stuff. So yeah. Gardner at the time, he was like the assistant pitching coach, but he was also just like, you know, Gardner's a dog. He's just, he would always like just shit talk Corey and they would just, they would go back and forth. And that's just, like, there's certain guys that are like that. He'd be like, Oh, you're not stealing any bags today. What are you doing? Just being a little bitch or what? Yeah. And he was like, Oh, okay. You want to see? Like, I'll go out there and get some bags. Like, that's just, that's kind of how that's, that's really what it's about. Like knowing your players and knowing right, who yeah. handles what. And like, he had some guys where he had to learn that like, okay, they can't handle right. this tough criticism. Like he would, talk shit to certain guys and they would fold and then he was like okay well i can't talk to that guy like that because yeah he just can't handle that you know what i mean so it just it definitely just depends on the player yeah i've always been curious if somebody yeah. just like i need you to come out here and just tell me like you know cuss me out or whatever yeah, like, yeah. get me get, get me fired up or something like yeah. that i would say like maybe the only person i could think of would be like dom moreno but you wouldn't have to tell him that he doesn't need any yeah, he, motivation to yeah to have you shit talk him he's he's ready to go whenever ready to go <laughs> don't got to get ready if you stay ready exactly exactly <laughs> all right yeah, yeah that's fun so uh, a couple other like mentality things that i've always been curious at and it's something that i've kind of thought about more and more recently so we talked about when you can't find the zone and you get that pitch that you think's a strike and you don't get the call mm -hmm. there's two scenarios that i think are kind of similar but i'm wondering which one would frustrate you much uh more so other scenario is, you know, you throw a, what you think is a strike, ump calls it a ball. Yeah. You know, obviously a frustrating one, especially if you are ahead in the count and all of a sudden now it's even or now that's ball two and you only have one strike. Or the other scenario here, and I feel like this one would be frustrating, but I just don't know from a pitcher's mentality. You got that two strike count, you make your pitch, and then the dude fouls it off. Yeah. <laughs> and then you make that pitch again and the dude fouls it off. I feel like those can be so frustrating and no exhausting like what's going through your head in like a, a a pitch count like that where you're just like i'm making my pitches the mm -hmm. dude just keeps getting like the tip of his bat off of it yeah oh it's so frustrating for sure i would say probably the more frustrating part is getting ball for yeah. an umpire especially because like as long as i got guys in like swing mode so they're fouling balls off like that i'm cool with because i know that they're probably going to keep swinging as long as i put it close but right. yeah, if you make a perfect pitch and you just get bald and you're like, okay, like what more do you want from me? Yeah. But yeah, it's definitely frustrating when guys keep fouling it off because you're like, dude, just put it in play. Like, I don't care if you get it. Yeah. You're over here racking up my pitch count right now. And no, like, right? like, I just, yeah, hit it to somebody or hit it, get on. Like, I don't care. Just quit fouling shit off. So yeah, yeah they're both like... super frustrating, but I would say umpire missing calls always piss me off a little more. What are your thoughts on where like umpires stand right now? Because I I feel like I feel like the, we've got there's some good ones, uh, you know. There's some ones yeah. that I don't have really problems with, but I feel like there's some that are just like so inconsistent. Yeah. Some guys just don't want to be shown up. Oh, yeah. you started to do the walk off on strike three. I'm calling yeah. this a ball, or you started to run to first base on this ball, so I'm yeah. calling it a strike. I feel like it's gotten more like blatant in some of these calls as I've been watching over the years. And I'm just like, how how has it gotten to this point? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think if you get an umpire with an ego, you're screwed. Like, you might as well just, like, pack it up if you're not, like, dialing it and everything's fine. Because 
egotistic umpires are the absolute worst. Like you're saying, like they're looking for something yeah, to piss them off, to like, to throw you out or to like, you know, give them an edge for some reason. And you're just like, well, you, dude, you're here to call balls yeah. and strikes. Like you don't need an edge. I'm the one that needs the yeah, edge. Like exactly. Yeah, dude. And it, and it's sometimes too, it's like guys, like, you know, they'll be asking if like, like, Oh, that ball's outside or whatever. And he's like, no, it's not. No, it's not like whatever. Like I'll do my job. Like, Dude, I'm telling you, it's outside. Like, it is. Trust me. Yeah. You don't know what's going on right now. But, like, also, don't get pissed off. Like, and it's almost, like, tells you that, like, they know they're wrong whenever they're doing stuff like that. Right, when yeah. they're so, like, quick. Like, that guy the other night that threw out uh, Goot or whatever, which Goot did it because he was like, okay, we can't get uh, Bazell yeah, thrown Bazell. out. You yeah. Know? So, yeah, yeah, he was definitely running by saying some whatever he could just to get the attention off of Bazell. But, like, that's the thing. The guy literally, like, after he called that strikeout, he just went to Bazell. Like, why can't you, if you're if an umpire, just turn around? Like, why do yeah. you have to, like, dude, you don't have to, like, go looking for stuff. These are kids, dude. He's What, how old is he? Like, he's, like, 20 years old. Like, yeah. you're a grown man, dude. Get out These of here. These are kids in the most competitive games of their lives. And yes, then you make a exactly. bad call that affects exactly. how this, the outcome of this game could be. Like, and these kids are, they're competitive. Why do you want them to be like, good call, guy? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like no, I, I feel always like loved it... umpires that were just like chill and they just called the game how they would call it. You know, that's just that's it. They weren't worried about what you were doing. They weren't worried about the team, all that stuff. It was always those as... umpires that just like, yeah, you know, got into the business is what was the problem. As a, a pitcher, how often are you like talking to an up? Are you like ever kind of going by after an inning and just kind of like asking maybe where a pitch missed or or like trying to figure out some of his where his zone might be and what you're doing or? Yeah, no, it, it it honestly just depends on the umpire. There were certain guys that yeah, you could talk you to that were fine, yeah. and there were some that you were like, well, there's no point in talking to him because yeah. he's either not going to listen or he's going to take it as disrespect and he's going to, like, ball me for no reason, you know? So there, it was just really about knowing the guys and because most of the time we would have, you know, maybe two, three rotations that were throughout the Big right, 12. Yeah. So you, you get the same guys all the time. And so I think it's really just about knowing who you can talk to like that who you can ask questions to and who you just need to avoid because there's no point. Okay. Yeah, I've just been curious, like, oh, you yeah. know, if you pay attention, I think Nolan Hesser, anytime a pitch he watched, he would ask the ump, like, you know, like where it was in the zone or yeah. something like that. And I yeah, think there's people, some guys, obviously as a batter, you're right there. So it's easy to right. ask, but yeah. I've always been and curious, then, like the pitcher. Yeah. It just, yeah, batter too. It just depends on how you're like asking too. Like some guys, they'll be like sarcastic about it. Like, oh, you have that up or like you have that down or something or whatever. These guys know the zone, but they're also trying to understand the umpire's zone. Cause like yeah. it's all, you know, like guys have a little bit different zone. So this guy calls outside a little more. This guy calls down a little more. And it's, it's good to know that if he's calling that that day. I just like, can't we just have the strike zone be the strike zone yeah. and it's over the plate? Like that's, I think where a lot of fans get frustrated is like this yeah. one has this strike zone where he likes to call low and inside. And this guy right. likes to call strikes up high. And right. Like, Why can't we just have a strike right. zone? That's we just need a strike a zone. zone. Yeah. And I think that's what a lot of people are trying to like get involved with the like automated strike yeah. zone. And it's just, I think there's a, I think eventually it will end up being that way, but I still think there's a, some kinks to like work out. And I think it will be better because, dude, if you have the technology, do it. Like, yeah, why I mean, not? Tennis has right? it. Like, the yeah, technology is exactly. already, already there. It's just right. trying to implement it. And right. baseball is a lot of the old ways. Right, right. <laughs> like, so, right. Uh, I mean, it took them forever to put a pitch clock in. And, and yeah. you know, yeah. uh, what are your thoughts? on Do you, do you like pitch clock? You pro pitch clock? Are you pro kind yeah. of pushing the game forward, making yeah, it go absolutely. faster? I think I've been a part of way too many, like, four and a half hour games. Yes, I, I. That's one thing I am jealous about. Give me pitch clock all day because yeah, yes, too many sit through uh, some of those games. Oh, oh, brutal, man. Yeah, yeah now yeah, you're long. seeing a lot of like two and a half hour games, like on average or something. Yeah, and you get some like like anytime we would have a game like two hours, it would be like oh my god, that was the greatest thing ever. You know, it's like so yeah. So I'm pro pitch clock for sure. Okay, cool. So uh, let's look back on a couple uh, memories in your time at Texas All Tech. Right. You were part of two College World Series runs. Of course, the first ever trip to the College World yeah. Series for the Red Raiders. And then back in 2016. So kind of take me 
like through your thought process for both of those runs and kind of how you view each team different because getting to be a part of two runs um, with like completely different squads is is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, completely different squads, like you said. And I mean, 2014 is definitely super special to me because it was the first time my freshman yeah. year, you know, we had such a great bond with that team. And, you know, just we had a bunch of dogs in it. And it was just like awesome to learn from all the older guys, too. It really kind of molded me the way I was a pitcher. And, you know, we we did everything together. We partied together. We hung out together all the time. And like it really just like kind of like that was what we looked forward to. We we're like, oh, we're going to go kick some ass and then, you know, we're going to party and we're just going to keep doing it. And, and, and I it, want and this it to did. be the last game. You know? Yeah, exactly. And, it, and it, you know, it did, it did. That's what I'm saying. It didn't like shock us that we were good at all by yeah. any means. Like we knew we were good, but it definitely did. I, I feel like all the stars like kind of aligned at the point. Like yeah. we were just, dude, that staff was unbelievable. We yeah. actually, 2014, we couldn't hit for shit, man. Like we had, you know, we had a few guys that were solid hitting, but overall that was just the pitching staff. And that's why I think that 2014 team was really special for me. Cause you know, that staff was dude, unbelievable. Yeah. And just the first time of like, you get into college baseball and you're like, dude, you got it. You want to go to the college world series. Right. And like, yeah, the fact Omaha, that I got to dream. do it for the first time, you know, at Texas tech, the school I always dreamed about going to. And it, so it really just kind of like solidified everything. Like my decision about going to tech and yeah. everything. It was like, it, this was, it was well worth it just for this one year, even, you know, and, and just the way that we got there, you know, as a what? Yeah. Were we a three seed or two? I think we were a two seed. We were a two seed in Miami. They were then. The, they were the number three overall yeah. seed. Yeah, three um, national seed, something like that. Yeah. And then, and then you then got we to had go. A, to, you had to go to the last game, and then that was. Yeah. Cam Smith's like. Yeah, dog. Gym dog with gym. Yeah, so yeah. I think it went. What a go! First game we played Columbia, and I think it was a close game too. If I remember, yeah, Goot hit a walk off like double or something like that. So it was a close game. And then uh, game after that, I think Dylan started and shoved. I think I think he went like seven or eight innings. And so then we were in the driver's seat. Miami gets back to there, and I think yeah, that's the game I started that game, and I started off great, and then we got into like a weather delay. Yeah, yeah, and, the rain delay. And I'm yeah. telling you, this was like the most shady thing ever. We were in Miami, and there it was no rain. We were delayed for like two hours. No rain whatsoever. Like, we could have finished that game, no doubt. I'm telling you, it was like, it was some corrupt stuff. Like, I'm out there yeah, shoving and having like the, yeah, dude, I went like, I can't remember, six, seven innings, something like that, and then they just stopped it. And so, like, I'm done. I'm, like, out there yelling at, like, NCAA officials. I'm, like, this is bullshit. Let's start play the game. Where's the rain? I'm, like, yelling. Yeah. Everybody's, like, he was trying to calm me down. And we had, like, a, we had, like, a little fight? brawl. Yeah, a little yeah, brawl yeah. then. Yeah. So, there was a lot of emotions there, too. And yeah. I've heard that stadium's a joke of a stadium. Yeah. Um, it's You would think it would be a lot better, too, being Miami. It's like, yeah. it's just kind of whatever. I, so I listened to the Dan Levitard show. That's like my favorite yeah. podcast. They're yeah. Miami-based, and they're big Hurricane supporters. Yeah. And he was telling us, like, last year at the call, or at the at their regional, they had Ole Miss, future you know national champion there. And he was like, I'd go to the bathroom, and I'd be peeing right next to their players. like Because I guess the, <laughs> the opposing team's locker room or yeah. bathroom is a part of this stadium i'm like what the hell <laughs> yeah it definitely wasn't like top notch by any means at all and it and was just a lot of success yeah oh and actually now that i think about it the game that so the get the cam finish i remember we had uh so the bullpens are like on the field too they're just like kind of the whatever bullpens and our bullpen catcher at the time uh brooks gustafson he like we went dog power like got excited after we won right final out yeah. and he got his uh his uh, catcher's met stolen by some little kid that no. was asking for it all game or whatever. And we get back over there. His catcher's just gone. Just gone. <laughs> just gone. That I'll can't happen. That. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But then stories. I guess you fast forward to 2016 and that one yeah. definitely like hurts me a little because dude, we should have won the national championship that year, or at least been playing for the national championship. That team was yeah, there's loaded. There's two teams when I was kind of like going back and doing the next topic that we'll talk about. That that 
that 16 team was Dude. loaded and that loaded. 17 team right after was loaded and they unfortunately got ousted in the regional yeah. those two teams yeah. i were like i just Dude. like going back i was like man how like that's mm-hmm. like stacked, 16 man. yeah 16 was tough it was like because what we lost on that luke and baker walk off or not walk off <laughs> yeah, but go ahead or whatever it was yeah, yeah. so he hit that and then and Ran then we beat the florida on a great was... game yeah like, yeah great game and then yes you get like team of destiny call or post carolina yeah. that's just like they were because we beat ourselves yeah. that game we gave up i think it was like seven to five maybe and i think we gave up six unearned runs like we yeah it was like our ourselves. best offensive game in the college world series to that yeah. point and then that's, you know. and then we just fell apart defensively and and i think that part just really kind of you know hurt us yeah. it, it it was a hard way to go out especially that year because that that was an also a fun team it was not my best year yeah. by any means you know i got kicked out of the starting rotation and it just kind of up and down all year for me but it was it was good to be able to go i think i started in the regional one game a do or die game against uh dbu that we had to win and yeah. through well i think I, me and hayden howard split half the game and so stuff like that was it was good to finish on a high note. And I think I threw against uh, Coastal also through well to keep us in the game. And I thought we were going to get back into it and just, you know, kind of a heartbreaker yeah. there. Yeah. Going back and looking through your stats and everything, you had 14 innings of uh, scoreless ball in the College World Series. So that's a pretty cool stat to get to carry hey, with you because, because, you know, all. your first start against Ole Miss, you went, yeah. you were shoving in that game. Yeah, man. And, that was uh, dude. like you Oh, and like I, I said, I think has there a team was that a, struggled to score. But. Yeah, yeah, there was a. I do remember uh, before that game because everybody, because I guess it was our second game, elimination game. Yeah, and everybody thought that uh, Dylan was probably going to start because he had an unbelievable year, unbelievable freshman year. And you know, I had a solid year; I was doing good and everything. And then uh, Tadlock, you know, called me, told me he was like, "Hey, we're gonna we're gonna give it to you. Like, I just I think you match up a little better with this team." whatever and i'm just like hell yeah let's ride you know and but i'm seeing like stuff on like twitter or something and they're like what the hell are we doing like why are we starting this kid or whatever and you know me i i didn't i didn't care i'm like an 18 year old kid i'm just a 19 year old kid whatever i'm just gonna go out there and you know throw like i don't care i threw like 95 percent fastballs it's not like i'm up there thinking crazy or anything you know what i mean so and that was just yeah exactly so that was just an unbelievable experience and old miss fans are awesome i'll say like they're they weren't like rude or anything but they were they brought the noise and it was, it was a cool cool environment for sure yeah what's what's it like pitching there what's it like that stadium it, it's obviously like Dude. bigger than most of the stadiums you play in in college yeah. it's you know got it's omaha it's legendary and it, Dude, it was still it's, relatively new yeah back in yeah. 14 wasn't it, it was, yeah it may um, have been the second year i think maybe the yeah. second year that it was there yeah Dude, it was awesome. Unbelievable stadium, unbelievable atmosphere. If you have you gone to Omaha at all? I have not been because yeah. next time, next time we go, yeah. you gotta go, dude. It's oh, it's a yeah. party. It's, a, it's 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 awesome. It's a bucket list. It's like one of the things about going. It's it's such a long event, and yeah. so it's like, yeah, do it's I like want to? Right. It's like, do I want to go or like? I, so next right. time, it's I'm like just you almost want to wait. Yeah. yeah, it's like you almost want to wait. Like, okay, if we make it to the national championship, yeah, like I'm, I'm in. I'll you know what it. I mean? Uh, yeah. It's it, it's hard to like gauge it, but I will say next time, dude, you just gotta you gotta make the yeah. leap and do it. It's dude, it's fun. It's, it's, it's gonna happen next time. I'm gonna go, and then it's gonna be like one of those things where it's like, okay, I'll go for like the first couple games, and if we end up making a natty run, it's like I'll yeah. have to come back. You gotta stay and back. Then go yeah, back, exactly. or, or uh-huh. do I stay, or like what? Right. I, I can Whatever. work on the road gotta... now with my job, so I'll just have there to take work with me and and no, make it yeah, work somehow. Absolutely. <laughs> but yeah, that stadium was great, dude. The atmosphere, unbelievable, and that's why I'm so glad I got to go twice because my yeah. freshman year, I was so locked in pitching wise that like. I couldn't even really take it all in. You know, I was literally just focused on Redmond, throwing to Redmond, like that's it, getting guys out. And, you know, and then my junior year, I kind of got to like take a step back and be like, because we're losing two and I threw like four or five innings also. So I got to like take a step back, look around the stadium, be like, damn, this is so the last time a I'm bit. ever yeah. going to be able to do this. Yeah. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's really cool. Any other experiences along the way you want to shout out? Oh man, dude, just all the hosting those uh, super regionals both times. Like, thank yeah. God that Florida got beat, I think, by College of Charleston. Um, yeah, that yeah. Freshman year. I was so glad that we got to host that because, dude, that was unbelievable. The atmosphere yeah, and, there. It talked oh. about two stressful games. Weren't they both like dude, one to one nothing? Out. <laughs> one out. And I think I got like, I was in the pen, I think, for both those games. And I think I got hot at 
some point at both times my heart's racing. I'm like, here we go. And I didn't get to pitch at all. But yes, two one to zero games. And I think both those guys that started for Colleges Charleston were I think they're both like big leaguers. Like they were it that like, yeah. Charleston was like no slouch. Everybody's like, Oh dude, you guys like got it easy because Florida lost. I'm like, dude, College Charleston was a good team. Like it's not like it's not no, like yeah, we they played, were, you know, like they beat yeah, Florida. Are, like <laughs> like that's how they, it works. And then Connolly with like the catch oh, of the catch, dude. The, that oh, the century right there. That was oh. unbelievable. Oh. But overall, the, the, like memory wise, like dude, just having some absolutely unbelievable teammates, like those yeah. guys, you know, most of them are like my friends for life, dude. I got I talk to a decent amount of them like every day. We're still in like fantasy football leagues and like we we all yeah. like hang out anytime we can, do any games, like we're always texting each other and stuff like that. So like having having guys like that just made everything worth it too. Yeah, the first time I think I like ran in to talk to you was at a tailgate, and you were yeah. there with Steven Smith. And, yeah, um, he's my boy. I, I, I can't remember who else might have been with you, but um, yeah, cool, cool to reflect on those, and no um, which will bring us to like our final topic of conversation here. Oh, is, here we go. Is uh, last last week, me and Dustin, we thought it'd be fun. We've seen him do, you know, <laughs> what what player from the past would you drop onto this basketball team? So we're like, you know, yeah. let's do like. What player from the Tadlock era past would you drop onto this team that you think could help us get out of this regional? And so I don't know if y'all knew, but each pick wasn't it wasn't like we were getting those four yeah, guys yeah. in all I, on the I roster. I made sure I made, yeah, I made okay. sure and like okay. listen to make cool. sure I was like, okay, there might be something up with this. Like I'm I'm yeah, listening. Like all give, four yeah, of those guys right. was like one guy right. that you're right. dropping on and we just did four picks of it. And so, um, and most of them, know, and most of them, I'm cool with. You know, I yeah. think I think they're all great Red Raiders. I mean, like Gingery, no brainer. You know, Josh Young, no brainer. How could you, you leave know, Josh Young off? Davis, you know? no brainer. Yeah. Like 2016, Davis was stupid. Like, yeah, but yeah, and then yeah, you get to yeah. So so yeah. we posted it. Not really, <laughs> not really thinking too much. Sure. You know, just well, like yeah. a fun exercise, sure. and and then all of a sudden. <laughs> We got Ryan Mosley, we got <laughs> Cam Smith, we got Tyler Nesloni, we got a bunch of dudes taking exception to it, and I was like, "Oh shit!" Like I shit. didn't mean yeah. to right. piss off all these guys, and, yeah, and so that's the thing. I messaged like, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so and give, your, thing, give your is, spill, yeah. the, give your spill, give your spill on that on that. Tweet. I mean, guys, we were yeah, we were just giving y'all shit because you know that's just how it is. And, you know, I think I saw Cam say something too, like just yeah, pulling yeah. around because he's an absolute clown too, and. You know, and I didn't like take exception to any of those other guys. It was just more like Micah Dallas, who you know he he was good good pitcher and he's he's a good dude. I'm sure I don't I don't really know the guy. Like I'm not gonna yeah. sit here and like shit talk him or whatever. But like, but you get a guy that transferred the, from the yeah. program. Like, and I don't care about A and M. We don't ever really play them anymore or anything. So I don't really yeah that doesn't bother me. But I'm like, you have so many good guys yeah, from the Tadlock area, and then you're gonna pick that guy and especially when you got my boy ct who went like 2015 yeah. i think it and honestly to be fair like i think it gets lost because we didn't make it to the tournament 15 you know stuff like that but he dude he had i want to say like maybe think 60 over... innings and like gave yeah. up two earned runs that's it like dude yeah, he had like, uh, like a I don't point think, three era yeah, point or three, something like that. yeah point three one point three something like that yeah. And then, so it's just like, there's some guys out there that people forget about it just, and I think it's just like more of like the social media era to yeah. era too. Like it wasn't around like in 2014, like it is today. Yeah. You know? So you got guys like you guys, you got some other pitchers. Yeah. You got like Cam Smith, dude, who was an absolute beast for yeah. two years, 14 and 15. He was great. dude. You have uh Johnny Droz, who was an unbelievable reliever for us in uh, 2014, yeah. you know, Don Moreno, who was unbelievable. And then, it's just like some stuff like that. That's really all, you know, some of these guys like take exception because, you know, they feel like maybe they forgot it. about yeah. it. Yeah. We started it and, you know, and we don't need to be like absolutely like recognized all the time. Like we're just happy that the program is in the like shape it's in because yeah. and we're happy to be like, we did start this. Yeah. We kick started dude, this. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Dude. And to see the success that we've had now, it's well worth it. So, but yeah, we had to give you a little shit because we were like, what yeah. is happening? Oh, and another shout out to even whenever the team was bad, 2013, you got Trey Mossick out there who is, yeah. who was an unbelievable pitcher, you know, just a, a shining star on a, you know, bad team. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. 
Good. Right. So you good can, stats, so people get lost into that, in the, into that yeah. kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So it's just it's no, good yeah. to be reminded of you know those guys. Yeah, I I totally understood like why some of y'all got upset, and then I you know I reached <laughs> out to you because I just like yeah. it kind of caught me by surprise. I didn't you know I didn't want to you know I yeah, never do anything dude. to try to offend and and especially no, no. to have yeah. the players getting upset. I was like, oh no, but. You know, for me in my like fandom of this is like you know I was started to get back in because of that fourteen run, right. but like sixteen is my like probably my right. favorite year. It was when I was at yeah. the games all the time. Right, like that's what probably sixteen and seventeen were the two yeah. years where that I just like totally lived yeah. or died by the team. And so absolutely, I like well, look dude, back and reflect on yeah, right, yeah. That sixteen team was so fun, dude. We you know kicked yeah. shit out of a lot of people, like you know, oh, yeah. won the Big Twelve, like pretty like. Pretty handily, like we swept oh, a lot yeah. of teams. You know what I mean? Like that. Yeah, that's it was, a, yeah, big thing. 2016, we were like big into sweeps too. We didn't want to just win the series. Like we wanted. No, yeah, I wanted to, to kick ass. <laughs> yes, yeah. We wanted all three games. We wanted that. Yeah, dude, it was it was a blast. And like where where I come from on this podcast is like I don't ever want to seem like we're not experts, you know. We're having a good time oh, talking yeah, tech yeah, tech yeah. sports, and so right. like and when I'm doing this, I'm honestly like my favorite player. Yeah, spitballing off the head. I love Josh yeah. Young. Yeah. yeah, you know I I love Davis Martin. Absolutely. Um, and so like some of those guys just stick with you a little bit, but yeah, I I, I felt it, and I was like, man, I you know because <laughs> I was definitely thinking I was like, I, there's some guys on that 14 team that were just like so good, and then Corey Taylor was just a just a complete miss. Dude, um, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah I just, but that's just and like that's you said, the way yeah, it is, dude. It, you know, nobody really talks about him. And that's kind of yeah. like, uh, we had another guy who was uh, not even on the team who reached out and was like, how do you not have this guy? You know, no like, way. Oh, that's man. so funny, man. See, that's what I'm saying. Dude. Yeah. It is. Like, but dude, to your credit, it's the same way. And I, and to be fair, I don't even blame anyone that wasn't watching, yeah. you know, that much in 14 because 13 and years prior were, Back. so uh, like i said we we're just happy that we got people excited about tech baseball oh yeah for sure you know? yeah so. i mean i'm not a tech like baseball diehard fan without yeah. that 14 y'all walk right. so like everybody could run you know that kind Absolutely, of dude. that kind of phrasing there but i will Absolutely. give dustin shit for taking micah dallas because like once <laughs> yes, once no, you transfer from dustin tech shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, I, I did done. i was like i was like you're the reason because you picked micah freaking <laughs> dallas like dude you yeah, transferred a and m uh-huh. I pro- I may not have even um you know replied to him then because you know I love Shedder's my boy I, he's a great yeah. pitcher he was awesome kill kill is awesome you know all those guys you know noise was a great hitter you know I even let him G-Lit, take do Shedder that, that the the yeah, Dylan yeah, Dusick Ryan Shedder combo funny. I was like yeah, yeah both just because he took Michael Dallas and they gave me yep. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly, yeah I wanted man, to yeah. wanted to air that out but no um, doubt no you doubt you know it was it's definitely fun to look back on all those teams and just like no all doubt. the dudes it's it's and that's the hard part of it is we only get eight picks and there's like 300 dudes. dudes that you could pick you know which there's is so also many a great guys. thing yeah which yeah, is also yeah. a great it's, thing there's been tons of talent that's run through lubbock recently and it's it's awesome to see and i'm excited for the future of it yep we are too um but man really appreciate you taking uh an hour out of your thursday night yeah, to dude. talk some tech baseball reminisce on your career Talk some shit fun. about one of our tweets. All good, <laughs> all in good fun. Yeah, um, I'll have had to get, a good. Yeah, dusting some shit next time I see you guys <laughs> in Lubbock for sure. Yeah, for sure. We'll be out at tailgates, you know. Oh, yeah. So uh, hopefully we stumble across you guys uh, at a football game or so Absolutely. this year. But uh, appreciate it once again, man. And uh, we'll we'll talk to you soon. All right. Oh, absolutely, man. I appreciate you having me, man. It was a lot of fun. All right. Cool. See you, man. Catch y'all at the next tailgate.